we're going to talk about this Boeing 737 MAX 9, which you'll recall was involved in a dramatic mid-air blowout. Air accident investigators in the United States said today that restrictions had already been placed on the passenger plane after pilots on three previous flights reported warning lights. The aircraft had been prevented from making long-haul flights over water. Its panel door blew out mid-flight on Friday over the US state of Oregon and has been found in a house backyard. This video taken by a passenger on board the flight shortly after takeoff shows there was a hole by the side of the plane where the panel was blown out. Here's the call that was made by the pilot. Need to return back to. We have 177 passengers. And just 20 minutes later, Flight 1282 made an emergency landing back at Portland International Airport in Oregon. Luckily, nobody was injured. In fact, it's quite amazing anybody uh, was not killed on this flight. Here's the moment Jennifer Homendy from the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board announced they'd found the door plug. I'm excited to announce that we found the door plug. Woo! Thank you, Bob. Bob, I will not give you Bob's last name, uh, but Bob contacted us at witness at ntsb.gov with two photos of the uh, door plug uh, and said he found it in his backyard. Well, the share price of Boeing has sunk 9%, wiping $13 billion off its stock market value. Alaska Air, that runs the MAX 9, cancelled 140 flights on Monday. Dr Todd Curtis is a former Boeing safety engineer and founder of the website airsafe.com. I asked him to explain how this could happen with such a new aircraft. Well, any aircraft, a very complex piece of machinery, and even one that is like the 737 that has been produced in one form or another for over 50 years, so with anything that complex, there's usually some sort of uh, issue that minor that has to be re resolved with a new airplane. Even a brand new airplane has to go through periodic maintenance checks during its lifetime. Now, some of those can happen fairly quickly. So I'm sure this airplane has had routine maintenance up until the point of this event. How important do you think it is that they've recovered the door or the, the section of the, of the airframe that had, had disappeared? I think it's absolutely essential that they recover that door to get a full picture of what went on. While they have the rest of the aircraft, the problem that this aircraft had was centered on that door. And by having that to analyze, they can see if there was some sort of manufacturing defect, if some maintenance had been overlooked, or any other problem that was not seen before this flight. It's now emerged that there were decompression lights that had been flashing three times previous in the cockpit. In fact, once on the day before on a flight that this aircraft had taken. Did they miss the warning signs? Well, they didn't miss the warning signs. As the NTSB said in their press conference recently, there were three of these events, one in December and two on the two days prior to the event. And at the time of the uh, conference yesterday, the press conference, they saw no direct link between the pressurization problem and the door problem. But one of the fortunate things about the problem was that even if it was unconnected, because they had that issue, this aircraft was not allowed to do what's called ETOP service, flying between the west coast of the U.S. and Hawaii. Had this event occurred out over the middle of the ocean, mm -hmm. it would have been several hours, perhaps, rather than a few minutes before the aircraft could have gotten back on the ground. Can you just explain what it would have been like in the cockpit from what we've heard? Because it blows out at 6,000 feet. What happens then and what would the, the pressure change be like inside, inside the cabin? Well, at 15 or 16,000 feet where this event occurred, the atmospheric pressure is roughly half of that on the surface of the Earth. So when you have something that large, like a door-sized gap in the aircraft, you would have a rapid decompression that would affect all parts of the aircraft. In fact, according to the NTSB, there was damage from several rows behind this, uh, this door all the way up to the cockpit area. So there was a rather chaotic scene uh, loose objects, papers and whatnot flying out of the aircraft. In fact, there was a critical checklist that was in the cockpit that was blown out of the cockpit somewhere in the back of the plane. So even if there was not damage, it was affecting how the crew could fly this aircraft. And yet we right. don't know what the chatter was between the pilot and the co-pilot because apparently the recording, the voice recorder, has been overwritten. Is that, is that typical? Well, that's correct. Uh, that's very atypical. The voice recorder in the U.S. is required to uh, have two hours worth of data. And apparently, after this event was over, 
rather than cutting the power off to the voice recorder, the power was left on. And over the next two hours, it silently recorded whatever was in the cockpit, which was nothing. And so when the NTSB looked at it, there was no data. Now, this has happened during several serious events, including runaway incursions and a near crash in San Francisco a few years ago, where an aircraft almost landed on top of four other aircraft waiting on the taxiway. After that event, the same situation occurred. The power wasn't taken off the, uh, the cockpit voice recorder, and there was no data. So what, finally, do you think is going on at Boeing? Um, this is an aircraft that was taken out of service for 20 months because of two previous fatal incidents outside the United States. It comes back into service, and now this. What happens, A, to the, to the future of the aircraft, given, I guess, the, the wide concerns that passengers will now have about flying on it? Well, as far as the future of the aircraft is, is, is concerned, it's pretty much assured. There is a set of orders for this aircraft stretching out several years, and they can literally create and manufacture dozens of aircraft a month of the 737 MAX series and have customers around the world. Now, as far as customer uh, concerns about this, that's a legitimate concern. This is an aircraft model that had two very serious fatal crashes within 18 months of its uh, entering service. Compare that to an earlier a uh, brand new aircraft design, the 777. It had been 18 years between uh, introduction and the first fatal event. And the 787 has yet to have a fatal event. 